name is Klug and I am your student sixth grade science teacher. I just wanted to create this video for you today so that you could get kind of a overview of what sixth grade science looks like, the kinds of things that we learn, and what we will be doing this school year. So let's go get scattered. This is a quick little rundown of what sixth grade science is. If you scan this QR code, which I have down below, you can get this whole presentation information with um, about sixth grade science and my philosophies on what we do here. So if you need to get in contact with me, the best way to get in contact with me is email I, or uh, by phone. I will typically give you a phone call back if you send me your phone call, your phone number, or I will email you back. Students should be sending Schoology messages in order to get information from me. This year, we have started with our unit on geology on Mars. We will look into plate motion, so looking at how um, Earth's tectonic plates move, rock transformation, so learning about how rocks change and transform, the Earth, Moon, and Sun, and how they interact and the importance of that, ocean, atmosphere, and climate, again, how they interact with our Earth system and Earth's geosphere. We will look at weather patterns looking really into how weather patterns change and what that means, and then uh, connecting that to Earth's changing climate and looking at the different climates that we have in on Earth and how they have changed and how they may change again in the future. So we use a blended learning model in this class, which means that learners get to work at their own pace and complete practice assignments and mastery assignments in order to demonstrate understanding and mastery of a topic. So really a huge portion of what their grade reflects is how much that how much they've learned. So we look at assessing what they've actually learned and really getting into uh, the learning that is happening here in science class. We do this in three ways. So students start by watching a video of me teaching similarly to what you're doing now. Then they'll answer some comprehension questions just to make sure that they understood the video and they got the key concepts. And then they'll complete some practice. So the practice assignments are important for, for mastering skills and understanding concepts. So practice might include some sort of a model, it might include a hands-on activity, it might just include some reading, but all of these practice skills are important to mastering and understanding concepts. After they've completed a mastery check, then they move into the, or after they've completed practice, they move into a mastery check, which really shows and assesses how much they've learned and what they still need to do to in order to improve their learning and understanding of a concept before moving on to the next one. Students can complete the practice, mastery checks, and videos as many times as they would like. They just need to, uh, if they close it or if they submit it and they need it reopened, they can always send me a Schoology message and I will reopen it for them if they would like to complete it again. So there's no reason here why we should not be getting 100% on each of these assignments, but that is up to each learner. So um, some things that students can t look at or think about and share with you is, I uh, will go quickly through these, is that they have the option to do leveled readers. So in science, we are reading to learn, not learning to read, and it's important that we understand the text and it's appropriate for us. So students have the option to pick a reader at a level that works for them, and we have conversations about this in class, and I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with students when I think, oh, you've gone too fast, maybe you need something more challenging, or hey, I don't think you're really understanding the concept, maybe we need to either slow down or take something that's a little bit easier because understanding uh, is really the importance here in our class. Students also have an opportunity for flex flexible seating and this is something that they see throughout the school year so they know um, that they can they can choose a seat that works best for their learning and then they can do their learning in that place. Ultimately I get final say so if a seat's not working or I don't think learning is happening I might ask a student to switch back and then um, think about flexible seating again for the future. Students, because they watch videos, it's important that they ask questions, but we need to think about what, where we are in our, question, um, in our questions. And so thinking about, hey, did I watch the video or did I watch the video intently? Did I get 100% on my practice? So do I need to go back and make sure that I understood the practice activities before I go and say, Ms. Klug, I really need you to reopen this assessment. I want to do better on it or this mastery check. Well, did we do all the things beforehand that need 
that really encourage us and help us be super successful. So these are some strategies that we suggest for instructional videos. Students have access to this. And then um, we have active reading strategies that we also use that students uh, are, that this is posted in the classroom for students as well. So I hope that this is a helpful understanding of what a blended learning science classroom looks like, what's happening here in science this year. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me so that I can answer them and I can help guide your learners and your students through a great learning experience this school year. I look forward to seeing and meeting all of you soon. And remember that today is a great day to learn. Happy learning!